Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. It's like he was just putting the pieces together for me in such a way that just was simple but powerful. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is God's truth right here. It wasn't always what I, what I wanted to hear, but I knew it was the truth, and I always wanted the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm beginning my fifth week of teaching on Elijah, and I've got this book entitled Lessons from Elijah, and I think I'm going to continue this even beyond this week. I may go into the ministry of Elisha, because Elijah didn't accomplish everything God told him to do, and what God told Elijah to do in 1 Kings chapter 19, Elisha had to wind up doing in 2 Kings chapter 8 and chapter 9. And so uh, we're going to continue talking about Elijah and go into a little bit of the ministry of Elisha because actually he fulfilled what God called him to do. Well, there are so many things. You know, I call this teaching Lessons from Elijah, and one of the reasons I've entitled it that is it's not just talking about somebody that lived four or 5,000 years ago. It's learning things from what they experienced. And we can learn at their expense and not have to go through the same things. And so one of the lessons that you can learn is that unless... Boy, this is a great statement, but unless your vision is bigger than yourself, and if it doesn't take other people or more than one lifetime to accomplish it, then I doubt that you've really heard from God. Now, that needs a little explanation because this doesn't mean that everybody's going to be doing big things, but I do believe that God calls all of us to do something that's bigger than ourself, and we need to be laying a foundation that others can build upon. And you see that through Elijah having his ministry finally fulfill the things that God told him uh, through Elisha. So we've already dealt with a lot of things. We talked about how Elijah came on the scene because he had a word from God. He was bold to speak that word when he did. God gave him the next step. And I really made a point out of this that God isn't going to show you step two through ten until you do step number one. That's one of the great lessons that you can learn. And then after he gave what God told him, God supernaturally protected him and sent him to the brook Cherith. There was a miraculous supply, but God didn't send the supply to where he was. He sent the supply to where he told him to go. Man, that is a powerful truth. We talked a long time about that. And then he went to Zarephath, and he took this widow woman's last little bit of food. He wasn't taking from her. He was giving to her, and because of that, she was able to be sustained through the drought, her and her son and Elijah, for somewhere up to three and a half years. Finally, Elijah comes back, tells Ahab that he wants him and all the prophets of Baal to come together, and he's going to have a showdown with them. And after he had delivered that word and what he said came to pass, Elijah was in total control of the nation. The king was obeying him. And so he had this duel between him and the prophets of Baal. He called fire down out of heaven, and all of the uh, sacrifice and the wood and even the stones were licked up. It must have made a crater. And the people fell on their face, saying, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And so there was a great revival. And then he told Ahab to head for home. He went up to the top of Mount Carmel, prayed, and uh, a supernatural rain came to end the drought, and Elijah was so pumped that he ran, outran a chariot. Ahab had a head start in a chariot, and uh, Elijah outran him to Jezreel. So all of that is really good. But then in the 19th chapter, this is what I was dealing with last week, is where Elijah got afraid of Jezebel. She sent a messenger with a note, and it intimidated him, and he tucked tail and ran. And the reason that he did that, it says there in verse 4, uh, 1 Kings 19, 4, it was because he says, I'm not any better than my father's. He had gotten swelled up with pride and actually thought God had used him because of some great goodness in his part. And the moment you take your eyes off of Jesus and you get to looking at yourself, you're just like Peter walking on the water in Matthew chapter 14. You're going to sink. You can't do the supernatural in your own ability. You have to have God's supernatural ability, and you have to keep your eyes stayed upon Him. So when he took his eyes off of the Lord, 
HE RAN OUT OF FEAR, AND INSTEAD OF GOD JUST KICKING HIM TO THE CURB AND SAYING, YOU KNOW, I'M THROUGH WITH YOU BECAUSE YOU RAN FROM A WOMAN AND YOU DIDN'T FULFILL WHAT I CALLED YOU TO DO. INSTEAD, GOD BROUGHT HIM TO THE MOUNT SINAI AND REVEALED HIMSELF TO HIM, SPOKE TO HIM IN A STILL, SMALL VOICE AND SAID, ELIJAH, WHAT ARE YOU DOING HERE? AND HE JUST MAINTAINED HIS GOODNESS. I'VE BEEN VERY JEALOUS FOR THE LORD GOD BECAUSE THE PEOPLE HAVE TAKEN DOWN YOUR ALTARS AND SLAIN YOUR PROPHETS, AND I, EVEN I ONLY, AM LEFT TO SERVE YOU. AND HE KNEW THAT WAS NOT THE TRUTH. FIRST KINGS CHAPTER 18, VERSE 13, OBADIAH HAD TOLD HIM THERE WAS STILL A HUNDRED PROPHETS, THOSE ARE MINISTERS, THAT WERE STILL SERVING GOD. AND SO HE KNEW IT WAS WRONG, BUT HE WAS JUST MINISTERING OUT OF HIS FEELINGS. HE WAS SUCKING HIS THUMB, LOOKING AT HIMSELF, AND BECAUSE OF IT, HE FAILED THE TEST. SO GOD ASKED HIM A SECOND TIME, WHAT ARE YOU DOING HERE? AND IF GOD HAS TO ASK YOU SOMETHING TWICE, IT'S BECAUSE YOU GAVE THE WRONG ANSWER THE FIRST TIME. AND INSTEAD OF HIM GIVING THE RIGHT ANSWER, HE JUST REPEATED THE SAME THING, MAINTAINED HIS OWN GOODNESS. AND SO THE LORD TOLD HIM, SAYS, THAT'S IT. YOU GO ANOINT HAZIEL TO BE KING OF SYRIA. YOU GO ANOINT JEHU TO BE KING OF ISRAEL. AND YOU GO ANOINT ELISHA TO TAKE YOUR PLACE. AND HE DIDN'T DO THE FIRST TWO. YOU CAN PROVE THAT. WE'LL BE GETTING INTO THIS PROBABLY THE END OF THIS WEEK OR THE FIRST PART OF NEXT WEEK. BUT YOU CAN PROVE IT BECAUSE ELISHA HAD TO GO ANOINT HAZIEL TO BE KING OF SYRIA, AND HE ANOINTED JEHU TO BE KING OF ISRAEL. HE WOULDN'T HAVE DONE THAT IF ELIJAH HAD DONE IT. ELIJAH DIDN'T DO IT. INSTEAD, HE WENT STRAIGHT TO ELISHA AND ANOINTED HIS REPLACEMENT. I PERSONALLY BELIEVE THAT HE JUST WAS READY TO QUIT. HE WAS GIVING UP. HE WAS EXITING AND SAYING, ALL RIGHT, GOD, I'LL GO ANOINT MY REPLACEMENT, AND HE LET IT GO. SO THAT'S WHAT WE'VE ALREADY COVERED. AND IT'S REALLY IMPORTANT THAT YOU UNDERSTAND THIS BECAUSE VERY FEW PEOPLE HAVE EVER BEEN AS SUCCESSFUL AS WHAT ELIJAH WAS. AND SO WE CAN GAIN GREAT INSPIRATION, BUT ALSO VERY FEW PEOPLE HAVE FALLEN AS FAR AS ELIJAH DID. AND WE CAN ALSO GET WARNED THROUGH THAT. AND HERE'S WHAT I WANT TO START DEALING WITH TODAY. EVEN THOUGH ELIJAH MISSED IT BIG TIME, AND, I MEAN, GOD WAS SPEAKING TO HIM IN AN AUDIBLE VOICE, AND HE JUST CHOSE TO DISREGARD TWO-THIRDS OF WHAT GOD TOLD HIM. THIS IS AMAZING TO ME. AND SEE, MOST PEOPLE HAVE THIS IMPRESSION THAT GOD, IF YOU JUST DON'T DO EVERYTHING HE TELLS YOU, THAT HE'LL JUST PUT YOU ON A SHELF. YOU KNOW, I REMEMBER THINKING THAT EXACT THING MYSELF WHEN I WAS IN VIETNAM. AND uh, I WON'T GO INTO THE WHOLE STORY, BUT I HONESTLY THOUGHT, GOD, YOU'RE JUST THROUGH WITH ME. I'M SUCH A MESS. HOW COULD YOU EVER... LOVE ME, AND I HONESTLY THOUGHT THAT GOD WAS JUST GOING TO PUT ME ON THE SHELF AND NOT SEND ME TO HELL, BUT, MAN, THERE'D BE NO CHANCE OF GOD EVER USING ME, ANYTHING GOOD HAPPENING. AND THE LORD IS JUST MERCIFUL, AND HE STAYED WITH ME, AND GOD PROTECTED ME AND REVEALED HIMSELF TO ME. AND YOU CAN SEE THAT RIGHT HERE WITH ELIJAH. EVEN THOUGH ELIJAH DISOBEYED GOD BIG TIME, AND THERE WAS THIS HUGE REVIVAL GOING ON, AND HE WAS ORDAINED BY GOD TO PREACH THIS REVIVAL AND TO DRAW THESE PEOPLE CLOSER TO HIM. AND THE VERY PERSON WHO CAUSED ALL OF THIS TO HAPPEN WAS RUNNING, SUCKING HIS THUMB, HAVING A PITY PARTY, ASKING GOD TO TAKE AWAY HIS LIFE. AND YET, DESPITE ALL OF THAT, GOD STILL USED HIM. AND LET ME JUST JUMP AHEAD. I'LL I'll GET TO THIS MORE IN DETAIL THE LATTER PART OF THE WEEK. BUT THIS MAN WHO FAILED SO BADLY WAS ONE OF ONLY TWO PEOPLE IN THE BIBLE THAT NEVER SAW DEATH. HE WAS JUST CAUGHT UP INTO HEAVEN AND NEVER DIED. NOW THAT IS AMAZING. YOU WOULD THINK THAT FOR A PERSON TO ESCAPE DEATH AND SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER JUST GET TRANSLATED INTO HEAVEN, THAT YOU WOULD HAVE TO BE ONE OF THE GREATEST, HOLIEST, MOST PERFECT PEOPLE THAT HAS EVER BEEN. THE OTHER PERSON THAT THAT HAPPENED TO IS ENOCH, AND OVER IN HEBREWS CHAPTER 11, I BELIEVE IT'S AROUND VERSE 5, IT SAYS THAT ENOCH HAD THIS TESTIMONY THAT HE PLEASED GOD. AND SO THE ONLY THING THAT IS SAID ABOUT ENOCH, IT JUST SAYS IN GENESIS CHAPTER 5, HE WALKED WITH GOD, AND THEN HEBREWS CHAPTER 11, THAT HE HAD THIS TESTIMONY THAT HE PLEASED GOD. SO ALL WE REALLY KNOW ABOUT HIM IS THAT HE WALKED WITH GOD AND THAT HE TOLD PEOPLE, I PLEASE GOD. IT DOESN'T LIST HIS GREAT HOLINESS. PEOPLE MISS THIS AND THINK THAT GOD LOVES US BECAUSE WE'VE GOT EVERYTHING TOGETHER AND WE'RE DOING EVERYTHING RIGHT. YOU KNOW, I JUST GOT THROUGH STUDYING THE BOOK OF JOB OVER THE WEEKEND. AND JOB, IT SAYS, WAS A GODLY MAN, ONE THAT LOVED GOD AND FEARED GOD, AND GOD HAD BLESSED HIM. BUT AFTER ALL THE THINGS THAT HAPPENED TO HIM, JOB NEVER RENOUNCED HIS FAITH IN GOD, BUT HE DID GET INTO GRIPING AND COMPLAINING, 
AND SAYING IT WAS UNFAIR AND THAT GOD HADN'T TREATED HIM RIGHT, THAT HE WAS MORE RIGHTEOUS THAN GOD. AND SO HE DID MAKE SOME SERIOUS MISTAKES. AND YOU WOULD THINK THAT WHEN A PERSON JUST SAYS THESE TERRIBLE THINGS ABOUT GOD, THAT THE LORD WOULD JUST TURN HIM INTO A PILE OF ASHES. SEE, THIS IS THE ATTITUDE THAT MOST PEOPLE HAVE ABOUT GOD. AND YET, WHEN THE LORD SHOWED UP IN JOB CHAPTER 38 AND BEGAN TO SPEAK, HE DID REBUKE JOB FOR HIS ARROGANCE AND THE FACT THAT HE WAS MAINTAINING HIS RIGHTEOUSNESS MORE THAN GOD'S RIGHTEOUSNESS. SO THERE WAS A REBUKE, BUT ULTIMATELY, GOD SAID JOB HAD SPOKEN THE RIGHT THINGS ABOUT HIM, AND HE REBUKED THE THREE FRIENDS OF JOB WHO HAD CRITICIZED HIM AND MADE THESE THREE FRIENDS COME AND HUMBLE themselves TO JOB AND ASK JOB TO MAKE A SACRIFICE FOR THEM. THEY HAD JUST RIDICULED JOB AND TOLD HIM THAT HE MUST BE A TERRIBLE SINNER. EVEN THOUGH THEY COULDN'T CITE ANY SPECIFIC SIN THAT HE HAD DONE, THEY KNEW THAT HE COULDN'T HAVE SUFFERED THE WAY HE DID IF IT HADN'T BEEN IN PUNISHMENT FOR SOMETHING THAT HE HAD DONE. SO THEY JUST TRASHED HIM AND TOLD HIM THAT HE WAS A TERRIBLE PERSON. AND AT THE END, GOD MADE JOB'S CRITICS COME AND HUMBLE themselves AND ASK HIM TO PRAY FOR THEM AND OFFER A SACRIFICE FOR THEM. SO THE POINT I'M MAKING IS JUST LIKE ELIJAH, JOB FAILED IN MANY WAYS, AND YET GOD LOVED HIM, AND IT SAYS IN JOB CHAPTER 42 THAT GOD GAVE HIM TWICE AS MUCH SUBSTANCE, TWICE AS MANY CATTLE, TWICE AS MANY CAMELS. HE GAVE HIM BACK ALL OF HIS SONS AND DAUGHTERS, AND HE, he LIVED ANOTHER 120 YEARS AFTER ALL THAT, SO THAT GOD, HIS LATTER STATE WAS BETTER THAN THE BEGINNING. AND YET JOB FAILED. ELIJAH FAILED. HERE'S A NEWS FLASH FOR SOME OF YOU, BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? YOU'RE GOING TO FAIL. Most of, MOST OF US HAVE ALREADY FAILED, BUT NONE OF US ARE PERFECT. I MEAN, THERE IS BENEFIT TO LIVING A GODLY LIFE BECAUSE AS MUCH AS YOU CAN CONFORM TO WHAT GOD'S WORD SAYS, IT'S BENEFICIAL TO YOU BECAUSE SATAN ONLY HAS ACCESS TO YOU WHEN YOU GIVE IT TO HIM. SO WHEN YOU GO OUT AND LIVE IN SIN, IT'S JUST LIKE THROWING YOUR ARMS OPEN AND INVITING THE DEVIL TO COME AND SHOOT HIS BEST SHOT AT YOU. SO I'M NOT ADVOCATING LIVING IN SIN, BUT I'M ALSO AGAINST YOU HAVING THIS CONCEPT THAT YOU'VE GOT TO SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER BE PERFECT AND DO EVERYTHING JUST RIGHT BEFORE GOD WILL BLESS YOU. GOD HAS NEVER HAD ANYBODY QUALIFIED WORKING FOR HIM YET, AND YOU AREN'T GOING TO BE THE FIRST ONE. AND SO WHEN YOU MESS UP, THIS IS ONE OF THE THINGS I WANT TO START GETTING ACROSS. AFTER WE'VE ALREADY TALKED ABOUT ELIJAH'S GREAT FAILING AND HOW HE JUST RAN IN FEAR AND MISSED AN OPPORTUNITY, THERE IS NO TELLING HOW MANY PEOPLE COULD HAVE BEEN TURNED TO THE LORD IF HE WOULD HAVE JUST STAYED WHERE GOD PUT HIM AND, and DID WHAT GOD TOLD HIM. He, HE MISSED GREAT OPPORTUNITIES AND HE JUST REFUSED TO DO TWO OUT OF THREE THINGS GOD HAD SPOKEN TO HIM. PEOPLE DIED BECAUSE OF HIS DISOBEDIENCE AND YET, GOD STILL LOVED ELIJAH AND STILL USED HIM AND ACTUALLY CALLED HIM UP INTO HEAVEN. HE WAS ABLE TO RECOVER. AND I'M TELLING YOU, YOU CAN RECOVER. I DON'T CARE WHAT YOU FAIL, HOW MUCH YOU FAIL. WE SERVE A GRACIOUS GOD, AND GOD CAN HELP YOU RECOVER AND GET BACK ON TRACK. SO AFTER HIS GREAT FAILING, IT SAYS IN THE 20TH CHAPTER OF 1ST KINGS, THIS IS ABOUT BENADAD COMING AGAINST AHAB. BENADAD SHOULD NOT HAVE BEEN KING OF SYRIA BECAUSE GOD HAD TOLD ELIJAH TO GO ANOINT HAZEL TO TAKE HIS PLACE. AHAB SHOULD NOT HAVE BEEN KING OF ISRAEL BECAUSE GOD HAD TOLD ELIJAH TO ANOINT JEHU TO TAKE HIS PLACE. SO THESE TWO KINGS AND THIS BATTLE, THIS WAS TOTALLY OUTSIDE OF THE PERFECT WILL OF GOD. IT'S NOT WHAT GOD INTENDED. AND BECAUSE OF IT, THERE WAS A LOT OF PEOPLE KILL JEHOSHAPHAT, THE um, KING OF THE SOUTHERN TRIBES OF JUDAH, HE GOT SUCKED INTO THIS BATTLE AND IT NEARLY COST HIM HIS LIFE. AND HE WOUND UP HAVING HIS SON MARRY AHAB'S DAUGHTER, ATHALIAH. AND HE DID THIS FOR POLITICAL REASONS. YOU KNOW, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS IN THE NEW TESTAMENT, SECOND CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 6, DON'T BE UNEQUALLY YOKED TOGETHER WITH UNBELIEVERS, BECAUSE WHAT FELLOWSHIP HATH LIGHT WITH DARKNESS AND CHRIST WITH BELIAL. YOU ARE SUPPOSED TO COME OUT FROM AMONG THEM AND BE YE SEPARATE. AND YET JEHOSHAPHAT, FOR POLITICAL GAIN, HAD A MARRIAGE BETWEEN uh, AHAB'S DAUGHTER, ATHALIAH, AND HIS SON, JEHORAM. AND DID YOU KNOW THAT IT WAS A UNGODLY MARRIAGE? THIS WOMAN, ATHALIAH, WAS TERRIBLE. AND AFTER uh, JEHOSHAPHAT DIED, uh, ATHALIAH TOOK ALL THE REST OF THE SONS 
OF JEHORAM AND HER AND TRIED TO KILL THEM. THIS WOULD BE JEHOSHAPHAT. ALL OF JEHOSHAPHAT'S GRANDCHILDREN WERE KILLED. I FORGET HOW MANY THERE WERE. AND THERE WAS ONLY ONE NAMED JOSIAH THAT ESCAPED. AND, uh, BUT ATHALIAH KILLED ALL OF HIS SONS. THIS IS BECAUSE HE MADE THIS uh, ARRANGEMENT FOR MARRIAGE OUT OF JUST CONVENIENCE. AND YOU COULD JUST GO ON AND ON. SHE WOUND UP KILLING LOTS OF PEOPLE, HER GRANDCHILDREN. FINALLY, SHE WAS EVENTUALLY KILLED. BUT MY POINT IS THAT THERE IS STILL GRACE FOR THE LORD EVEN IN THE OLD TESTAMENT. AND SO MANY PEOPLE MISS THIS. SO THE 21ST CHAPTER OF FIRST KINGS IS WHERE NABOTH HAD A VINEYARD THAT WAS CLOSE TO THE PALACE OF KING AHAB. AND uh, AHAB DESIRED TO HAVE NABOTH'S VINEYARD, WENT DOWN AND TOLD HIM, SAYS, I'LL BUY THE VINEYARD FROM YOU OR I'LL GIVE YOU ANOTHER VINEYARD SOMEPLACE ELSE THAT'S EVEN BETTER, BUT I WANT THIS ONE BECAUSE IT'S CLOSE TO THE PALACE. HE COULD LOOK AT IT AND ADMIRE AND TAKE, YOU KNOW, JOY IN, in HAVING THAT VINEYARD. AND NABOTH SAID, GOD FORBID THAT I SHOULD DO THIS KIND OF A THING BECAUSE THIS IS MY FAMILY INHERITANCE. I'M NOT GIVING IT TO YOU. AND SO AHAB WENT BACK INTO THE PALACE AND HE TURNED HIS FACE TOWARDS THE WALL ON THE BED AND JUST LAID THERE. HE SKIPPED HIS MEAL, AND WHEN HE SKIPPED THE MEAL, HIS WIFE, JEZEBEL, QUEEN JEZEBEL, CAME AND SAID, WHAT'S WRONG WITH YOU? WHY AREN'T YOU EATING? AND HE SAID, NABOTH WON'T GIVE ME HIS VINEYARD. YOU KNOW, THE BIG BABY, HERE HE IS, THE KING, AND BECAUSE SOMEBODY WOULDN'T GIVE HIM A VINEYARD, HERE HE IS SULKING, NOT ABLE TO EAT, WITH HIS FACE TOWARDS THE WALL. AND JEZEBEL GOT ON HIS CASE AND SAID, AREN'T YOU THE KING? YOU CAN DO ANYTHING YOU WANT TO. YOU LEAVE IT TO ME, AND I'LL GET THAT VINEYARD FOR YOU. SO WHAT SHE DID, SHE HIRED PEOPLE TO GO AND LIE ABOUT NABOTH AND SAID THAT HE HAD CURSED PEOPLE. IN DEUTERONOMY CHAPTER 19, IT SAYS THAT YOU HAVE TO HAVE TWO OR MORE WITNESSES TO CONDEMN ANY PERSON. SO SHE WENT AND HIRED A NUMBER OF PEOPLE THAT CAME AND SAID THAT NABOTH HAD CURSED GOD AND THE KING, AND SO THEY STONED HIM TO DEATH, AND THEN SHE WENT AND TOLD uh, AHAB THAT HE NOW OWNED THE VINEYARD. AND SO AHAB, HE KNEW WHAT WAS GOING ON. HE KNEW THAT NABOTH WAS NEVER GOING TO GIVE THIS VINEYARD. HE KNEW THAT JEZEBEL HAD HIM KILLED. AND DID YOU KNOW THAT THE LORD ACTUALLY HELD AHAB RESPONSIBLE FOR KILLING NABOTH? NOW, AHAB DIDN'T DO IT DIRECTLY. HE DID IT THROUGH HIS WIFE, BUT HE KNEW WHAT WAS GOING ON. AND WHEN I READ THESE SCRIPTURES, IT'LL SHOW YOU THAT HE HELD AHAB ACCOUNTABLE. THERE'S A DIRECT LESSON THAT WE CAN LEARN IN THIS. AND THAT IS THAT PEOPLE THAT ARE UNDER YOU, THAT WORK FOR YOU, OR THAT ARE UNDER YOUR INFLUENCE, THAT DOESN'T MEAN YOU'RE ACCOUNTABLE FOR EVERYTHING, BUT IF YOU KNOW WHAT THEY'RE DOING AND YOU ALLOW IT TO HAPPEN, WHETHER YOU INSTIGATE IT OR WHETHER YOU LET IT HAPPEN, DID YOU KNOW YOU ARE RESPONSIBLE? THAT IS A GREAT LESSON TO LEARN RIGHT HERE. AND I TELL YOU, I'VE GOT A THOUSAND EMPLOYEES AND uh, I'M NOT RESPONSIBLE FOR EVERYTHING THAT THEY DO, BUT TO THE DEGREE THAT I KNOW AND SANCTION WHAT THEY'RE DOING, I AM ACCOUNTABLE FOR THAT, AND GOD HOLDS ME ACCOUNTABLE. THERE'S A LESSON TO LEARN HERE. SO ANYWAY, HE WENT DOWN TO THE VINEYARD TO ENJOY IT, AND IT SAYS IN 1 KINGS 21, VERSE 17, THE WORD OF THE LORD CAME TO ELIJAH THE TISHBITE, SAYING, ARISE, GO DOWN TO MEET AHAB, KING OF ISRAEL, WHICH IS IN SAMARIA. BEHOLD, HE IS IN THE VINEYARD OF NABOTH, WHETHER HE HAS GONE DOWN TO POSSESS IT. NOTICE THAT GOD STILL CALLED IT THE VINEYARD OF NABOTH. I BET YOU AHAB PROBABLY NAMED IT AFTER HIMSELF AND CALLED IT HIS OWN VINEYARD AFTER THIS, BUT GOD SEES THINGS DIFFERENTLY THAN WHAT WE DO. AND IT REALLY DOESN'T MATTER WHAT WE SAY. IT'S WHAT GOD SAYS. THERE ARE MEN TODAY WHO ARE CALLING THEMSELVES BY A DIFFERENT NAME AND PROCLAIMING THAT THEY'RE A WOMAN, AND THEY SAY THAT THEY'VE JUST CHANGED AND THAT SEX IS NOT A STATIC THING. IT'S NOT SOMETHING YOU'RE BORN WITH. IT'S JUST HOW YOU CHOOSE TO BE. WELL, THAT IS JUST TOTALLY WRONG. IT'S JUST WRONG, AND IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT YOU SAY. I'M SAYING THIS IN LOVE. I'M NOT AGAINST YOU, BUT YOU ARE WHO GOD MADE YOU TO BE. GOD DIDN'T CALL, call THIS AHAB'S VINEYARD. IT WAS STILL NABOTH'S VINEYARD. GOD LOOKS AT THINGS DIFFERENTLY. AND THE ONLY OPINION THAT COUNTS IS GOD'S OPINION. WELL, THAT IS POWERFUL. IT DOESN'T MATTER HOW MANY LAWS THEY PASS OR WHAT THEY LET YOU DO. IT'S WHAT GOD SAYS THAT COUNTS. IF YOU WERE BORN A MAN, YOU'RE STILL A MAN. IF YOU WERE BORN A WOMAN, YOU'RE STILL A WOMAN. I DON'T CARE HOW MANY SEX CHANGE SURGERIES YOU GO THROUGH OR HOW MANY HORMONES YOU TAKE OR DON'T TAKE OR WHATEVER. YOU ARE WHAT GOD MADE YOU TO BE. SO HE SAYS, GO DOWN TO THE VINEYARD OF NABOTH AND TALK TO AHAB. AND IT SAYS IN VERSE 19, AND THOU SHALT SPEAK UNTO HIM, SAYING, THUS SAITH THE LORD, HAST THOU KILLED AND ALSO TAKEN POSSESSION? 
NOW, AGAIN, REMEMBER THAT AHAB DIDN'T PERSONALLY KILL NABOTH, BUT HIS WIFE DID, AND HE KNEW WHAT WAS GOING ON, AND HE KNEW WHAT KIND OF WOMAN SHE WAS, AND HE KNEW THAT NABOTH WOULD NEVER GIVE THIS VINEYARD UP ON HIS OWN, SO HE KNEW THAT IT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER WAS TAKEN FROM HIM, AND GOD HELD HIM ACCOUNTABLE AND TOLD uh, ELIJAH TO TELL AHAB, HAVE YOU KILLED AND ALSO TAKEN POSSESSION AND THOU SHALT SPEAK UNTO HIM, SAYING, THUS SAITH THE LORD, IN THE PLACE WHERE DOGS LICKED THE BLOOD OF NABOTH, SHALL DOGS LICK THY BLOOD, EVEN THINE. AND AHAB SAID TO ELIJAH, HAST THOU FOUND ME, O MY ENEMY? AND HE ANSWERED, I HAVE FOUND THEE. YOU KNOW, THIS GOES BACK TO 1 KINGS CHAPTER 18, AFTER ELIJAH HAD PROPHESIED THIS DROUGHT, AND HE WAS GONE FOR THREE AND A HALF YEARS, AND THEN HE SHOWED UP WHEN HE FIRST SAW AHAB. AHAB SAID, ARE YOU THE ONE THAT TROUBLES ISRAEL? AND ELIJAH SAID, IT'S NOT ME TROUBLING ISRAEL, IT'S YOU AND YOUR HOUSE BECAUSE YOU HAVE REJECTED THE THINGS OF GOD. NOW, HERE AHAB IS SAYING, OH, MY ENEMY. IT WASN'T THAT ELIJAH WAS HIS ENEMY, IT'S THAT AHAB HAD BECOME AN ENEMY OF GOD, AND ELIJAH WAS A SPOKESMAN FOR GOD. I TELL YOU, THERE IS A DIRECT APPLICATION, A LESSON TO LEARN FROM ELIJAH RIGHT HERE FOR ALL OF US, THAT YOU WILL HEAR THE WOKE CROWD, THE, I DON'T KNOW WHAT YOU CALL THEM, BUT ANYWAY, THIS UNGODLY CROWD THAT IS RISING UP AND TRYING TO TAKE POSSESSION TODAY. YOU'LL HEAR THEM COME AGAINST CHRISTIANS AND SAY THAT WE'RE THE BIGOTS AND THAT WE'RE THE ONES THAT ARE CAUSING THE TROUBLE, AND THEY'LL COME AGAINST US AND BLAME US FOR THINGS THAT THEY ARE GUILTY OF. ELIJAH WASN'T AHAB'S ENEMY. AHAB WAS ELIJAH'S ENEMY. HE'S THE ONE THAT CAME AGAINST HIM. HE'S THE ONE THAT CAME AGAINST GOD. I AM NOT THE ONE WHO'S CAUSING PROBLEM IN THIS NATION. IT'S NOT ME STANDING UP AND SAYING THAT MARRIAGE IS BETWEEN A MAN AND A WOMAN. THAT'S NOT WHAT'S CAUSING THE PROBLEM. IT'S ALL THE PEOPLE WHO ARE SAYING THAT A MARRIAGE CAN BE BETWEEN TWO MEN OR BETWEEN TWO WOMEN OR BETWEEN AN ADULT AND A CHILD OR BETWEEN AN ADULT AND A DOG. BESTIALITY, THAT'S WHAT THE SIN IS. AND IT'S NOT US WHO ARE STANDING UP FOR TRADITIONAL uh, VALUES, BIBLICAL VALUES, THAT'S THE PROBLEM. IT'S THE UNGODLY WHO ARE THE PROBLEM. AND SO HE TOLD HIM THAT IN THE VERY PLACE THAT THE DOGS HAD LICKED HIS BLOOD, THE BLOOD OF NABOTH, THAT DOGS WOULD LICK THE BLOOD OF AHAB. AND I DON'T HAVE TIME ON TODAY'S PROGRAM, BUT I WILL BE SHOWING YOU THIS, THAT IT CAME TO PASS JUST EXACTLY THE WAY THAT ELIJAH SAID. AHAB DIED IN BATTLE, AND HE STOOD UP IN THE cha uh, CHARIOT FOR A LONG TIME TRYING TO KEEP THE BATTLE GOING, AND FINALLY WHEN HE DIED, THEY BROUGHT THE CHARIOT DOWN TO uh, NABOTH'S VINEYARD, AND AS THEY WERE WASHING IT OUT, THE DOGS LICKED THE BLOOD OUT OF THE CHARIOT IN THE EXACT SPOT WHERE HE HAD uh, NABOTH KILLED, AND THIS PROPHECY CAME TO PASS. I TELL YOU WHAT, YOU DON'T MESS WITH GOD. YOU DON'T MESS WITH THE PEOPLE OF GOD. GOD GAVE US A NATION THAT WAS FOUNDED ON BIBLICAL PRINCIPLES. THIS NATION COULD NOT EXIST WITHOUT THE GOSPEL. WE ALL KNOW THAT GOD HAS GIFTED US AND WE KNOW THAT WE ARE RESPONSIBLE FOR WHAT WE DO WITH THAT GIFTING. WE MUST REBUILD THE UNITED STATES OF AMERICA, THIS CONSTITUTIONAL REPUBLIC UNDER GOD. THE TIME IS NOW. WE CANNOT WAIT ANY LONGER. COACH TONY AND ALSO J.B., YOU KNOW, WE STARTED THIS ABOUT TWO YEARS AGO, uh, TALKING ABOUT THE KNEELING ISSUE IN THE NFL, AND YOU WERE SHARING WITH ME SOME OF THE BACKGROUND STORIES BEHIND THESE PEOPLE, AND WE JUST GOT TO SAYING, WE NEED TO GET THESE STORIES OUT THERE BECAUSE THERE WAS ANOTHER SIDE. I'M TONY DUNGY, AND I'M REALLY EXCITED ABOUT A NEW SERIES I'VE BEEN WORKING ON WITH JAMES BROWN CALLED BEYOND THE GAME. YOU'VE BEEN CALLED CAPTAIN KIRK, yeah. YOU KNOW, A LEADER OF MEN. JESUS ULTIMATELY DID THAT BETTER THAN ANYONE, and, uh, AND HIS INFLUENCE TO THIS DAY IS GREATER THAN ANYONE'S. AND SO I LOOKED TO HIM, LOOKED TO THE BIBLE, LOOKED TO SCRIPTURE AND, and THE GOSPELS TO SAY, HOW DID HE LEAD, WHAT DID HE DO, AND THEN TRY TO LIVE THAT OUT. COACHES AND ATHLETES IN YOUR FAVORITE SPORTS, AND YOU GET TO SEE A SIDE OF THEM THAT WE DON'T ALWAYS GET TO SEE, THEIR FACE SIDE. WE HAVE SO MUCH NEGATIVE PRESS ABOUT ATHLETES AND, YOU KNOW, SPOUSAL ABUSE AND ALL KINDS OF THINGS GOING ON. AND I THINK THAT THIS IS REALLY GOING TO MAKE A DIFFERENCE FOR PEOPLE TO SEE THAT THERE'S SOME REALLY GODLY PEOPLE OUT. CLEARLY IT'S THE ABHORRENT BEHAVIOR OF A FEW THAT GETS THE MAJORITY OF THE HEADLINES. SO IT'S NOT ONLY GOOD FOR THE ATHLETES, BUT I KNOW THAT YOU GUYS SOMETIMES ARE JUST THROTTLED IN WHAT YOU CAN SAY ABOUT THE LORD. WE GET SO FRUSTRATED, ESPECIALLY WHEN WE'LL GO OUT AND DO A FEATURE PIECE 
uh, but it has to get cut down into a one minute or two minute interview. And the audience can't really hear what is in the heart of these men. We're thankful to you, as Tony said, to give us this platform, Andrew. We'd love to have your help. Go to beyondthegame.co to find out details. Learn from the successes and failures of others and explore the right and wrong ways to serve God when you get Andrew's teaching titled, Lessons from Elijah. Let me just mention once again that we have this book on lessons from uh, Elijah. We have the study guide on lessons from Elijah. We have CDs and DVDs that were taken from television. And we're also offering companion teachings where I have lessons from Joseph and lessons from David. Our announcer will give you all that information, but these studies and these lives of these men are powerful, it'll bless you, so please take advantage of it today. Andrew's complete series, Lessons from Elijah, is available in a newly updated CD or DVD album and as a book and study guide in either English or Spanish. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Or you can get these products as part of the Lessons Package, which includes two books, Lessons from Elijah and Lessons from David, and three albums in your choice of either CD or DVD, Lessons from Elijah, Lessons from David, and Lessons from Joseph. These teachings will give you the chance to learn from the successes and mistakes of three very powerful but very human men of God. The Lessons Package has a catalog value of $135, but you can receive all these valuable resources today for just $95. Today, Andrew's book, Lessons from Elijah, is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this book to you free of charge. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Gospeltruth.tv provides free 24 seven access to biblical teaching you can trust. Our Grace and Faith channel features teaching from Andrew Womack and other ministers he's personally invited to share with you. Watch daily live programming, including Bible studies and the Truth and Liberty Coalition, as well as conferences, miraculous testimonies, life-changing stories, and financial breakthroughs. Start watching for free today. Visit gospeltruth.tv for biblical teaching you can trust.